Hey everybody, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to optimize your Divi website from mobile using the Visual Builder. Now, if you've seen a lot of my previous tutorials, you know that I'm a big fan of writing custom CSS and using that to make adjustments with media queries for phone and tablet. But the more I use the Visual Builder, the more I've learned to appreciate it. And I've found that it's got a lot of hidden features that will help you adjust your website for mobile and tablet views. So what we're gonna do is we are going to adjust this page that I made and we're gonna make sure it looks good on mobile. So let's go ahead and walk through the sections that I have in place right now. First things first is we have a very large header text section right here that is definitely gonna to need to be adjusted for mobile. And if we scroll down here, we have a section where we have an image overlapping the top section of this shady looking gentleman right here. So we're gonna to need to make sure that looks good on mobile. And we've got a call to action section that looks really good on desktop, but again, we wanna make sure it looks good on mobile as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into the Visual Builder. If you're using the back end, it's a lot harder to make changes responsively because you're limited to just seeing what you see in the back end. With the Visual Builder, it gives you the option to look at tablet and phone live so you can see how things look. So I'm in the Visual Builder here. I'm gonna go ahead and click the options open and we're gonna go ahead and take a peek at how this is all set up. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna click this little grid icon here which is actually gonna show us each module and how it's set up. So you'll see initially that there is a lot of padding. I know the image is blue in the background, but there's a lot of padding on the top and the bottom of this main section. Of course, we've got a big font. Here's where you can see the image overlap, and you'll notice that this section here has no padding at all on the top and the bottom, including the row right here. And then in our call to action section, you're gonna see that this content is has kind of a max width, so you can see it's only stretching here. It's not going across the whole screen, and that's because I've got padding on the right and left right here in the row. So you can see all that padding right there. Now, let's look at what's really important. Let's check this out on mobile. So you can click the mobile icon here in the Visual Builder, and here's where things get a little dicey. You can see that this text, while it doesn't look terrible, it's very, very big. On a phone, you're gonna have to scroll down to see you know, potentially a couple scrolls just to get down to the bottom of this section. So we're gonna wanna adjust the padding and we're gonna wanna adjust that text. You can see here is where it gets really tricky because we've got no padding around the text here. The image that I overlapped on desktop is overlapping the text. And whoa, what's going on there? You can see because of the padding that was added to this section, that is looking really wacky right there as far as our call to action section. So here's where we wanna start. We're gonna go ahead and mess with this front part first. So what we're gonna do is on mobile, a lot of people will dive right in and start making changes like this. So they might drag this up, they might drag this in, and think, okay, well that looks good. Well now, when you go out to the desktop, you can, sh you can see that I actually made those changes across all browsers. It's a little unfortunate. I hope that the guys at Elegant Themes adjust that to where you click these and the changes you make will be changed live. But in any case, let me show you what we're gonna do here. First things first, if I go into the settings, if I go into design and go to spacing, I can see all all of the padding that I just put in there. So I just adjusted that padding on desktop and let's put that back to, I think maybe like 150 look good. Yeah, that looks good. We'll do padding on the bottom and the top of 150 so it looks big on desktop. Now again, on mobile is where it looks a little messed up. So the way you can adjust that is without getting into custom CSS, again, you could go into custom CSS and make a class for this section. You could go into advanced custom CSS and go into the main element, but if you're leery of code and you wanna do it visually, you can go right in here to custom padding and then click this little phone icon. This gives you the options to adjust the padding for tablet, and for smartphones. So in this case, you can see right now it's at 150. I'm just gonna make this 50 pixels instead of 150, same thing, 50 instead of 150. And you can see it cleans the padding up on that tremendously. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna do smartphone, but just remember you can go into tablet and tweak the same settings just as you would with smartphone. Okay, so the padding looks cool and it looks fine on desktop still. Now let's adjust this text. If we go in here, I can see that I have this text set as an heading one, H1. So I'm gonna go into the heading text. I can see all my settings here and we can see the font or the text size right here. Same thing as the padding, I'm going to click this phone icon and in my smartphone view, let me go ahead and move this out of the way here so we can get a better shot at that. I'm going to move this, right now it's set as 4M and I think I had played around with this previously so we're gonna pretend like this was actually 
78 pixels because generally it's going to have the same look as the desktop. Whatever you set at desktop, it's going to set for tablet and smartphone automatically. So smartphone is 78. We can see that we don't want that. So let's back this down to maybe like a uh, 32 or maybe a 31. Yeah, 32 looks good. So we're going to go ahead and stick with that. And now you can see it looks good on desktop. And if we go to mobile, it looks much better on mobile too. You can see more of the picture with the city behind it. Now let's go ahead and adjust this too. So we're gonna go into our row sections here, or excuse me, our, our uh, section settings, and we're gonna go to spacing. And you can see that initially there is no padding up top, no padding on the bottom, but if we go to mobile, we can go ahead and just add maybe a little padding there. Let's do like 30, that looks good. Now we could do this for the row as well. I'm doing this on the section, but you could do it for the row as well. Now, the last thing we need to adjust here is my image. Again, it's overlapping because if I go back to desktop, let's go ahead and take a peek at how I have this set up. Under design, under spacing, you can see that I have a margin, a custom margin of negative 100. That's what's bringing this image up. So if I take that out, Normally it's gonna look like that, but I'm just gonna throw a little negative margin there and it's gonna pop that up. Now I wanna adjust that again for mobile so it's not overriding that text. So on the smartphone view, we can see that it's overriding there. Let's do uh, maybe a negative 50. Let's see how that looks. Negative 50 still is really close there, so I might set that to negative 20, or you could even adjust the padding and just completely take the padding off. So we could set that to zero and that'll look fine on mobile. Again, you'll wanna do the same thing to tablet just to make sure that doesn't overlap, you can adjust it accordingly. And the last thing here is again, this call to action section. Looks great on desktop, but as we looked in mobile, you can see the padding that I added here really caused that text to, to mess up and nobody wants to read that. I see this happen all the time and especially new people getting into the Divi, they're like, oh, what the heck happened there? So here's a little trick I'm gonna show you. You could, again, this is where I adjusted that padding. You can adjust the padding visually and you can go into the design settings and the spacing and you could just go into the mobile view and adjust it there. You could go to padding left and padding right and you put that at zero and it's gonna look good on mobile. But let me show you a nifty little trick that I use all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to what it was. I do this frequently for elements that I want to center, but I want to have a fixed width. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and back the padding on both sides completely off. So I'm holding shift option and dragging that. So we've got that. We want to come up with that same look to where there's like a max width and we keep this stuff centered. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll either go into the module element or the row element. In this case, uh, let's go ahead and do the row. That'll be nice. We'll click into that. I'm going to click advanced. I'm going to go to custom CSS and I'm going to go into the main element, which is going to adjust the whole row. I'm going to do a what's called a max width. This is pretty cool. Max width. And we'll set this at, let's say, 500. So that looks pretty cool. We can set it as a max width of 500, and it's automatically going to adjust that section similar to how we had it previously. And you can see what that did was not only adjust the text, but the module itself. Now, the really cool thing about that is if I go to mobile, it looks perfect on mobile. So I didn't need to go into those settings and change everything. All I did was just add a max width to the mo or I'm sorry, the row right here. And I just, you wanna make sure if you do that, that the alignment is centered, otherwise it could bounce things over to the left. But if you give something a max width, you will look, it'll look great on desktop and it'll look good across all devices without you having to change things. So let's go ahead and exit the visual builder and take a look at our page now completely on mobile. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna uh, right click and use inspect element which you've probably seen me do. This may just look slightly different than what you see in the visual builder and it's always a good idea to check your phones as well. But this is what it's gonna look like. So I'm on my uh, inspect element here. I'm gonna look at, we'll just say, we'll go to the iPhone 6. So here's what it'll look like on the iPhone 6. You can see nice padding, you can see more of the city, the text looks good. The header text here looks good. There's no overlap. And my call to action section looks pretty good as well. I could probably go in and tweak the padding on top and bottom on mobile a little bit more. So that's it, guys. That is a quick little tutorial on how I use the Visual Builder to make my sites look responsive and good on mobile and tablet. So I hope this helps, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have some fun optimizing your Divi sites for mobile using the Visual Builder. Cheers.